that you should never ever let anybody know what your social security number is in the US. my channel if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back my name is Nay and I make videos on education personal finance and personal development with some story time and lifestyle and I make videos mainly for F1 visa and H1B visa holders in the US so today's video is kind of gonna be about like some of the things the moves you have to make at least like within the first month of you coming into the United States some people don't really know this like they just come in and then they don't realize that they have to do all of these things and all of this paperwork so these are some of the moves that you need to make when you come into the United States so the first thing you have to do is to get a social security number the social security number you might ask what is it I think it's SIN in Canada and in Nigeria I think it would be NIN number I'm not very sure because I never really had it when I was in Nigeria but I think it will be NIN number and that number is basically like a number that you know that is used to track you it is um, specific to you and you alone it is unique to only you and also something else I'm gonna say I'm gonna chip in here is that you should never ever let anybody know what your social security number is in scammers the can use it to track you scammers can use it to scam you like people can use it to impersonate you so don't you ever give it to anyone it's a unique number and it's unique to you alone so the ssn is like i mentioned is like a nine digit number that is unique to just that person and it's used like it's attached to everything basically like your bank account your um, work like it's it's basically attached to everything that you're doing so the SSN if you don't have an SSN you would not really be able to do a lot of things like you won't be able to work because if you're going to look for a job it's one of the things that they're gonna ask you they're gonna ask you like your name address all of those things and then they're also gonna ask you for your social security number so if you don't have an SSN then you can't really work you can't really get a job so when you come into the US newly the SSN is one thing that you should make sure that you get within like the first week when I got into Berea College the first yeah it was the first week I think it was like the third day or the fourth day or something that was the day that we did paperworks and paperworks and paperworks you know we're filling things and filling things and filling things and that was also the day we applied for SSN so you should apply for a social security number when you get um, into the US so that you can be allowed to do um, a lot of things um, the next thing that you should apply for when you get into the US is um, a bank account that's the next thing you should open a bank account so you can go like open any bank you want. I would also advise that you do a research on the bank that you want to open so you kind of like know what the bank offers, like you know what it is that you're getting yourself into when you're opening that bank. Um, you also ask questions, like for instance, for me, the bank that I had, because again, like I said, I attended Berea College, so it's in Kentucky. So the bank that I had was in Kentucky. But after I moved, because I moved to Georgia to work, and after I moved, I realized that that bank was not here like it was not in Georgia physically which is it's it's quite you know stressful to me because it's like I didn't really want to change bank because honestly I love the bank but that's kind of like an example of something you should know right for me of course it took long it was like okay after I graduated Berea and you know worked in a, another company for some time before I'm working in my current company um, before I actually realized that um, this bank was not in Georgia but that's also like some of the things you should you know be able to figure out that's some of the things you should know when you're opening a bank account how it's going to suit you for the purpose um, that you want. So the third thing that you should um, be able to do when you just come into the US is um, get an apartment, get a place to stay. I feel like this one you should actually have you should actually have planned it from Nigeria um, because again you can't just come to the US and you don't have any place to stay. I know a lot of people that come they come and they stay with like relatives for some time before they then move into what they are doing for me i came and i came straight to my school and my school already had like you know accommodation for us i know some of my friends that like i know someone that actually came last year 
no she came two years ago and she didn't really have a place to stay so she had to kind of like start applying for accommodation when she got here like she had to start applying for like a place to stay and to apply for accommodation in the u.s it's actually very um it's actually stressful looking for an apartment like applying for accommodation and looking for apartments in the u.s especially if you want to live off campus so if you want to live in like your actual apartment and not in the school dormitory not in the school dorms now if you want to live outside of campus in like an apartment you have to first of all have again like i mentioned before social security number because they're going to use it to track you then also some things is that the apartment complex would usually say oh you have to have triple um the amount like triple the amount um that you're paying for rent so let's say if your rent is one thousand dollars um a month your income should be up to three thousand dollars a month so your income has to be at least triple the amount of your rent that's the way it's in my apartment complex i have seen it for so many apartment complexes and they will not you know give you an apartment they will not give you a place to stay if you're not making at least three times the amount for your rent so that's also something else that you should be in mind and another thing you should also be in mind is that they do credit checks so now if you're just coming from nigeria you don't have a credit card your credit score is zero so you don't even have like a way for them to do credit checks so if you're coming from nigeria and you want to live off campus i'm gonna say live with relatives or live on campus and then during that period during like six months to one year you just kind of like build up you know the things that you need in the u.s before you move off campus because because it brings me to the fourth thing that I'm gonna say. Have a credit card. So open like a credit card account. What is a credit card, you might ask? A credit card is like money that is lent to you, basically. So you know how instead of going and swiping your debit card when you wanna purchase something, you can swipe a credit card. But the thing is that the credit card, it's not your money. So you have to pay it off at the end of the month. If you don't pay it off at the end of the month, you get an interest. For the next month um, some credit cards their interest rates are between 15 to 25 percent but now the thing with a credit card is that when you're like you know paying off your credit card as you're supposed to you're not like using it all the time you're just using it moderately you're using it the way you're supposed to use you're paying off your money you're not owing on your credit card it builds up your credit score so credit scores are usually like what lenders in america use before like before someone lends you money not really someone before like um an institution like a financial institution lends you money in america they are going to run a credit check on you and to see what your credit score is so if you have i think a credit score of at least above 600 then that's like fair but if you have below 600 then that's poor um so that's also something else that you should do when you come into america like within like that first month also apply for like a credit card the thing with applying for a credit card is that they might not give you they, they might actually say you know they might not give you a credit card because it's like your first time right but if you go and you apply for what is called um i can't remember what it's called i'm going to insert it here but if you apply for that type of credit card it means that you're using your own money so it's not like the bank is giving out their money you're using your own money to build your credit score so that's what a lot of people i know that's what my friends use to build up their credit scores before they were then able to apply for a real credit card so that's also something else you should do when you come here then guys the next thing you should do of course which honestly i feel like should be within the first week you come is also of course get a sim card actually you should even be getting a sim card the same time that you're getting like your social security number because those are the two things that you would need to put in when you're like applying for other things for instance if you're applying for like i believe like a bank account if you're opening like a bank account i believe they're gonna ask you for your number and an address i believe so when you're even applying for your social security number i feel like this period is the time you should also like purchase your sim card like i feel like you should do the both of them simultaneously because those are like one of the, the two things that you need when you're applying for like other things and then guys also another bonus thing that i'm gonna say is this is probably like after like the first five months of you being in the u.s and kind of like understanding how things work maybe by like your six or seven months the next thing i'm gonna say is start saving up um for emergency fund a lot of people don't really save up for emergency fund a lot of people don't think it's necessary but if you're um an immigrant especially an international student in the u.s you know that you only got yourself so at this point you have to be saving up for the future because you don't know what's going to happen in the future sometime in 2020 opt which is what you used to work after you graduate school 
people apply for OPT and they did not get their OPT till after six months, a lot of people lost their jobs, you know, because you cannot work if you don't have your OPT card because it's essentially your work permit. A lot of people lost their jobs because they did not have their OPT card. So now how are they going to survive? You know, a lot of people that I know that lost, that lost their jobs at this point, what they were using to survive was the emergency money that they had saved up all through like when they were in school and all of that. So as an international student, when you have kind of like gotten your bearing, like after like the first six months in the US, when things start finally making sense, you have your own apartments now, you know how bills work, you know how credit card works, you your credit score is going higher. The next thing I'm gonna say is start building up for emergency funds, start saving for emergency fund. I have a video that I made, which I'm gonna link somewhere here, which talks about why you need an emergency fund and how to save up for it so um yeah guys that brings me to the end of my video i hope this video is really going to be helpful to someone and don't forget to like subscribe and share you guys know the drill also turn on post notification and i'll see you guys in another video